welcome to the distinguished lecture series of the Indian Mathematics Consortium. The aim here is to host virtual colloquia by some of the best researchers and expositors around the world. The speakers are carefully chosen by the scientific committee from among mathematicians who are not only distinguished researchers but are also known for the quality of their exposition. The principal aim here is to make the talks as widely accessible as possible, especially to PhD students. With this in view, the format of most of the talks will be in two stages. First, there will be a pre-recorded talk by the speaker, which will be posted online. Interested audience can then view this at their leisure and communicate questions, if any, to the organizers. The second stage will be a live interactive session between the speaker and interested participants and that will be held about two weeks after posting the online talk. The approximate duration of the talk will be about 45 minutes and that of the interactive session will be about half an hour. The Distinguished Lecture Series is co-hosted by IIT Bombay and ICTS Bangalore. Welcome. Hello and welcome to this uh, lecture. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce today's speaker, Professor Nina Gupta. I have known Nina since she was a graduate student and it has been a pleasure and a delight to watch her grow into one of the finest young algebraists in the country today. Nina obtained her PhD in the year 2011 from the Indian Statistical Institute or ISI, Kolkata. Uh, under the supervision of Professor Amartya Dutta. She uh, is currently an associate professor in the theoretical statistics and mathematics division of ISI Kolkata. She has many beautiful works uh, to her credit and I mention in particular her remarkable solution of uh, Zariski's cancellation problem for the affine space A3 in positive characteristic. Uh, she answered this long-standing problem in the negative uh, for these and many other works, she has received numerous awards and professional recognitions. I will just name a few. She was a recipient of the Indian National Science Academy Young Scientist Medal in the year 2014, just three years after his, her PhD. Uh, she received the Swarn Jayanti Fellowship from the Department of Science and Technology or DST of Government of India in the year 2015. She received the prestigious Shanti Saru Bhatnagar Award uh, in Science and Technology uh, in the year 2019. Uh, just last year, she received the DST ICTP IMU Ramanujan Prize given to young mathematicians from developing countries and uh, sponsored partially by the International Mathematical Union together with uh, ICTP in Italy and the DST of Government of India. She is an invited speaker at the International Congress of Mathematicians uh, uh, this year, 2022, which was to be held in St. Petersburg. I think it will still happen virtually. Uh, and just uh, earlier this week, uh, to be precise, on 8th of March, the International Women's Day, she received what is called the Nari Shakti Puraskar, which is a Women Empowerment Award. Uh, given to women who have done significant contributions uh, across uh, different fields and uh, she received this from the President of India. So as I said, it's a great honor that uh, for us that she has agreed to give uh, this lecture in the TMC Distinguished Lecture Series program and she will speak to us on GA actions and their applications. Over to you, Nina. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about GA actions and their applications. GA is the additive group K plus for a field K. The K plus is an additive group and that group action acting on affine varieties and their applications. At first, I would like to apologize uh, because this talk is very basic and uh, it's an introduction. You can say uh, maybe only uh, newcomers or students uh, can find this talk a uh, uh, little bit of uh, some material and uh, it uh, hardly contains uh, much input for the experts in the area. 
so i i will talk on this area and uh, so so the key words in my talk which we come across is g actions so g action has its equivalent formulations exponential maps which we can talk of on arbitrary rings and local important derivations on rings containing the field of rational numbers so there are some major breakthroughs in the area of local important derivations and exponential maps uh, mainly they are the characterization of the affine plane by mianishi which led to the solution of the zariski's cancellation problem for the affine plane in 70s the solution of the linearization conjecture by russell corus makalimanov and kaliman and uh, basically they proved non trivialty of certain threefold which was in very important problem at that time uh, which was proved in 1990s and the third uh, major breakthroughs was proving the non trivialty of this asymptotic threefold uh, which led to the solution of the zariski's cancellation problem for the affine three space in ca positive characteristic so before that let me we first define the concept of ga actions so throughout my talk k will always denote a field uh, for defining ga action it is better to assume that k is an algebraically closed field but most often it is not necessary v is an affine variety over k and ga is this additive group k plus which you can also realize as a linear subgroup of the this uh, group gl2k which is a reductive group and ga is then an unipotent subgroup of gl2k any ga action on a variety v is nothing but an added algebraic uh, action of the additive group so it's a, a group action uh, on the variety v which uh, so the group action satisfies this identity action that uh, of the identity element of ga is zero So zero theta of zero x is x for every x in V, and theta of uh, this additive group action. So this additive action hmm. map. So this is alpha and beta. If you apply it first beta and then alpha, then this is alpha plus beta. So this is the additive action. So these two axioms are basically your the uh, actions, this group actions. And when I say it's an action on a variety, I mean that they are algebraic actions. So that means this theta is a morphism of varieties. So there are so this group action has been a very uh, important uh, and central topic of research right from the 19th century. So studying group actions on a variety and to study the ring of invariants had been very interesting topic. In fact, the uh, if you know this hilbert basis theorem which was proved by hilbert in 1890 was a outcome or i could i would say it was an outcome on his study of the invariant theory problem which actually led to the solution of a fundamental problem in an invariant theory so it was on the basis whether the ring of invariant of a certain group actions are finitely generated or not so Hilbert's fourteenth problem. See, Hilbert has listed down some twenty-three problems in the ICM nineteen hundred, and there he had listed down some twenty-three open problems for the mathematicians of the twentieth century to uh, attack and to work on them. And one of the problem, this fourteenth problem, was also uh, originated from the theory of group action on an affine variety. and uh, so the first major result on an adzenbock and uh, so moderator had given a proof in as early as in 1899 and this was uh, there was a gap in the proof which was taken care by witzenbock in 1932 finally sheshadri gave a complete proof in 1962 so they proved that over a field of characteristic zero if ga is acting on an affine variety by linear transformations then the ring of invariant is certainly finitely generated so this is a result which tells you that the study of ga action on an affine variety is a very early subject and many people many many big people have been studying this for a quite long time so this is one of the main theorem in the study of uh, algebraic group actions so this result says that if g is a 
linear algebraic group of the GLNK, then these two statements are equivalent. That is, the ring of invariant KVG is finitely generated for every algebraic action of G on V if and only if G is a reductive group. So no matter what action you have taken, if the ring of invariant is always finitely generated, then G must be a reductive group. So, and the converse is also true. So this was uh, proved by Nagata. Uh, this implication one implies two by Nagata and Popovin two implies one. So in some sense, uh, uh, and this result for finite group was settled uh, by Amy Neuser. So nowadays it may be taken as a standard exercise uh, for people studying integral extensions and in commutative algebra, but it is, <coughs> it's a noteworthy result for a finite group. And uh, <coughs> I mean, either gave a complete proof of this. So as you can see that uh, this statement that the ring of invariant is finitely generated if and only if the group G is reductive, uh, completely in some sense shattered the study of a uh, the GA action because GA is in very much an unipotent group. So it is complement of reductive group. So certainly it means that the ring of invariant of a GA action did not be finitely generated. And there are explicit examples which have been given by Nagata and so many people. So therefore this concept of a study of a ring of invariant of GA actions was thought of to be uh, something peripheral or pathological. And it was not interesting to many researchers because they just don't have any handle or control over the ring of invariant. So it became a little bit of a unfashionable outside a limited circuit. However, many big people like uh, Gabriel, Noyes, Rensler, Dixmeyer, they have been contributing in this area by proving many important results. In the, the first, major breakthrough in the area of a GA action was achieved by Mia Nishi. He was probably the first researcher to study or investigate GA action systematically. Uh, in his book, uh, TIFR book uh, 1978, he highlights the concept of local important derivations and proved many important theorems on uh, local important derivations, which led him to the many important breakthroughs in the area of affine algebraic geometry, namely the classification of the affine surfaces characterization of the affine plane, and which eventually led to the, his solution of Zariski's cancellation problem for the affine plane. Later in 1990s, Makalimanov, Devney, Finston, Vandenessen, Kaliman, Degley, Frodenberg, uh, Dugson, Dublos, Bhattwadekar, and Datta, and many subsequent researchers have been contributing in this area vigorously from 1990s. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm missing some a few people, but there have been many important results and discoveries by these people. Let me first uh, tell you about the major breakthroughs uh, which have been achieved using GA actions on an affine variety. The first major breakthrough which was achieved was the solution of the Zariski's cancellation problem for the affine plane. Here we use a version of local important derivation, which is a version of GA action. So it helped in the local important derivation again helped in the solution of the linearization conjecture. So this was a conjecture which was posed by Kambayashi in 1976, and it remained an open problem for a long time, at, at least for two decades. Uh, the solution of this uh, C star action on C3, uh, it took almost two decades for many big people to solve it. And uh, finally it was solved. And uh, so a solution, C star as you see is a, a reductive group. So the study of this reductive group act actually brought in the study of the uh, unipotent group. So unipotent group, so those are not considered to be good groups. So the solution of this C star action, actually this, uh, this uh, linearization problem actually had uh, to go through this study of the C plus action on that affine variety. We will be discussing this and recently, uh, we used exponential maps, which led to the solution of the Zariski cancellation problem in positive characteristic in higher dimension. So thus, uh, from these uh, three major breakthroughs, one can see that uh, 
the study of uh, this additive group or this GA actions is not uh, something to be looking, should not be looked, uh, looked below or means something not uh, unusual. In fact, uh, certain invariants of the GA actions or uh, there are quite useful things which may help in proving major problems in affine algebraic geometry. And, uh, and it could be a part of a general armory of algebraists and geometrists, may not be just confined to specialists. So we now begin with the formal definition of G actions. So this we have seen. So K is an algebraically closed field, B is an affine domain. V denotes the max spectrum of B, the consist of all points, which are maximal ideals of B. And G as the additive group K plus, so it's a group along with an algebraic uh, this variety structure, ring theory structure. And the action of G on P is a morphism of affine varieties, which satisfies the two actions of the group actions. So another definition, which I can say is of exponential map. So let K be an algebraically closed field. It's for this, you don't need uh, K to be a field of characteristic zero or algebraically closed. So K is any field and B is an K algebra. So the exponential map on B is a K-algebra homomorphism from the ring B to the ring B U, which satisfies those two axioms. That is, the first axiom is if you have this map phi U and this map evaluation map U to zero, then this composition is identity. So this is that evaluation map. And if I denote phi U for this uh, indeterminate U, then phi U composed with phi V so phi V is the map from B to B V and U is sent to U as just identity. So this composition is nothing but phi V plus U. So if we look at it more carefully, translate it into algebraic so the geometrical situation, then when K is an algebraically closed field and B is a finitely generated K algebra and V is the max spectrum of B, then this G action on V is nothing but uh, the exponential map on B. So you can see the study of GA action on a variety is equivalent to the study of exponential map when K is an algebraically closed field and B is a finitely generated K algebra. So whether you study the group action or whether you study this kind of K algebra homomorphism, you are doing the same thing. Another definition is local important derivations. So derivations we are all comfortable with. So D is a derivation, is a K linear map from a ring integral domain B to B which satisfies this uh, linear, this, this linearity rule, this uh, uh, k d of x plus y is dx plus dy, and this Leibniz rule that d of x y is x dy plus y dx for every x and y. And a derivation d is said to be a local important derivation if it satisfies that for every element x in b, there exists an integer n depending on x uh, such that nth derivative of x is equal to zero. So that is why this name nil put that it can highlights an element x after some time. So this x may depend on this integer n may depend on the element x. So local component derivation may be thought of as a partial generalization of the partial derivative. So uh, you have seen del del x on a polynomial ring. So they are, are they are the examples of local component derivations. We will denote L N D of D the set of all local component derivations on D. Now we will see that this concept of local important derivations and exponential map are same as the study of GA actions. So we assume that the ring B contains the field of rational numbers, the K is an algebraically closed field, then any exponential map phi U from B to BU, which is given by a ring homomorphism. So it sends an element B to a polynomial in U. And because of this identity condition, B the coefficient constant term is B itself. So any such exponential map will give rise to a local important derivation, which is the coefficient of U. So if I set D of B equal to B1, which is the coefficient of U, then D will be a local important derivation. So this is an exercise and it's not difficult to check. In fact, we can see that B of Bn, the nth coefficient of U to the power n is nothing but the nth derivative of B divided by n factorial. So this division by n factorial is needed. Therefore, we need Q is contained inside B. Conversely, 
given any local important derivation d from b to b, we can construct an exponential map phi u from b to b u by this and using this formula. So this uh, does the study and uh, the study of exponential map is same as the study of local important derivations. Further, an element b is in the kernel of a local important derivation if and only if uh, you can see from this that phi u of b is b, that is b is in the ring of invariant of phi u. Further, thus over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, a G action on a variety V is same as the study of exponential maps on B, which is same as the study of local important derivations on B. And the study of ring of invariant of a G action is same as the ring of invariants of an exponential map, which is same as the study of kernel of local important derivation on a ring B. So we have now understood that the G action is uh, has two equivalent formulations, local important derivations and exponential maps, which are all same when K is an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Now we come to this uh, first major breakthrough, that is the algebraic characterization of the plane. Uh, so let K be an algebraically closed field. So the Zariski's cancellation problem for the affine plane asks whether uh, if a uh, the polynomial ring over a ring B is isomorphic to a polynomial ring in three variable. Does this imply that B is isomorphic to the polynomial ring in two variables? So this problem was uh, named, is named Zariski's cancellation problem. And in his attempt to solve this uh, cancellation problem for the affine plane, the great mathematician from TIF at CP Ramanujam, he gave an algebra, proved a very important result. He proved this, uh, to, gave a topological characterization of the affine plane. And subsequently, Miyanishi gave the following uh, algebraic characterization using local important derivations. So Miyanishi, again, in his attempt to solve the cancellation problem, he proved that when K is an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, and B is a finitely generated K algebra of dimension two, such that B star is K star, the units of B is same as the units of the field K, B is a unique factorization domain, and there exist a non-zero local important derivations on B, then B must be a polynomial ring in two variables over the field K. So as we see that if it is given that B1 is K3, then from this we can immediately conclude that B is a finitely generated K algebra of dimension two, the units of B is same as units of K and B is a unique factorization domain. Thus, the solution of this uh, Zariski's cancellation problem eventually reduces to prove that there exists a non-zero local component derivation on it. Fujita, Miyanishi, and Sugi, they gave a solution to this cancellation problem. They proved that if B is a K algebra such that B1 is K3, then B is K2. This result was further generalized in um, arbitrary characteristic by Peter Russell over a perfect field, and then we later did it on any arbitrary field. So this uh, solution, the solution so me was achieved by as a subsequent uh, this, this, the major result which they used was a Mianish's algebraic characterization uh, using local important derivation, and their proof is very beautiful, but. Uh, it uh, involves so many ideas which are not usually self-contained. So Makalimana very recently in 2008, he gave a simple self-contained proof using just local input and derivation. And I will be just giving a brief illustration of that proof. So what Makalimana did is he just find an invariant. So which uh, is associated to a local input and derivation. So given any ring R, he defined the subring of R, ML of R, which is intersection of all kernels of D, <laughs> where D varies over all the local point derivations on the ring R, which is same as the intersection of R phi, where phi varies over all the exponential maps on the ring R. So Makalimana, uh, he called this uh, subring the AK invariant, and it is uh, nowadays it is known as ML invariant. And this is an invariant of the ring. That is, if you have any automorphism of the ring, it will uh, fix this subring. For example, the, if you have the polynomial ring CXYZ, then it is easy to see that the Makalimana invariant of CXYZ is C because you have 
the three locomotor derivation, the partial derivatives given by del del x, del del y, and del del z. And if an element f is in the McCullman invariant, then derivative with respect to x, y, and z must vanish, and therefore f must be a constant function. So, therefore, it's a, in some in usually it's not so easy to compute the McCullman invariant of a, any arbitrary ring, but for polynomial rings, these are very easy because of the presence of partial derivatives. We now give a proof due to Kreshala and Makalyumana of this uh, cancellation problem for the affine plane. So for that, we will be using this lemma. So let B be an affine domain over a field K such that there does not exist any local important derivation on B. So B is a ring which does not admit any non-zero local important derivation. Then uh, he, they proved that the uh, Makalman invariant of B1 is B. Uh, the proof is uh, quite elementary, but of course it's uh, not so easy, but this proof is quite useful. This, this result is quite useful. It immediately solves the cancellation problem of uh, Fujita, Miyanishi, and Sugi. So note that if B1 is K3, then B is finitely generated of dimension two. The units of B is same as units of K, and uh, B is a unique factorization domain because B is a retract of the polynomial ring K3 and retract of an UFD is a UFD. And all we need to prove is that B admits a non-zero local important derivation using Mianish's algebraic characterization. And now uh, my claim is that B actually admits a non-zero local important derivation because if it does not, then uh, Makalman invariant of K3, which is a polynomial ring must be K as we have seen before. And therefore by this result, McCullman invariant of uh, B1 cannot be B because McCullman invariant of B1 is K. So B1 cannot be B and therefore B must admit a non-zero local component derivation and hence the proof. Therefore B must be K2 by Mianish. This algebraic characterization of the affine plane. Uh, similarly, let's say following Mianishi, we tried to give an algebraic characterization of the affine three space uh, with uh, my Nikhilesh Dash Gupta. So we defined uh, uh, ln star of B, the collection of all local potent derivation whose image contains one. So these are the derivations which having the slice and we define, so this ML star of B is the intersection of all the kernels of D where D varies over ln D star of B. So this uh, ML star B has been defined in this Frodenberg's book, 2006, and uh, we call it the frodenberg mccullman invariant. And using this invariant, we obtained the following algebraic characterization of the affine plane and the algebraic characterization of the affine three space. So we proved that if B is a finitely generated K algebra of dimension two, then the following three statements are equivalent. That is, B is a polynomial ring in two variables. If and only if B admits a local important derivation whose image contains one. Sorry, this ML star of B is K, and which is same as saying that uh, uh, the B miss this uh, <laughs> uh, McCullough invariant of B is K, as in, uh, B admits a non zero local important derivation having a slice having Ms. Who's image contains one. A similar such characterization is also true for the affine three space. If we have further assume that B is a, a unique factorization domain of dimension three over an algebraically closed field, none of these hypotheses that K is algebraically closed or B is a UFD cannot be, this can be dropped. In fact, this characterization also cannot be extended to dimension four. So, so this is what uh, we had shown for uh, and an attempt to, to give a characterization of the affine three space. This is the result which we have shown. Now we come to this uh, Russell chorus threefold. So this uh, ring A, uh, it's an hyperplane hypersurface in uh, uh, K4. So it's given by this equation, which equation looks quite simple because it's linear in Y. And the degrees are also not very high. So this is a very simple equation. And this was a major important problem, 90s, whether A is a polynomial ring in three variables or C. And why it was so tempting to believe that A is actually C3? Because 
This ring A is a regular ring. It's a unique factorization domain. The units of A are same as units of C. It has a dominating map from C3. So in some sense, it is sandwiched between two C3s. All projective A modules are free. Further, uh, this uh, variety given by this ring A, uh, which is a zero set of this polynomial, is diffeomorphic to R6. And V has logarithmic prodera dimension minus infinity. Uh, we just recall this uh, famous topological characterization of the affine plane by C.P. Ramanujan. Uh, accordingly, if we had all these properties were given by an affine surface, then that surface must be C2. So that every normal affine surface homeomorphic to C2 must be C2. Whereas all these characterizations, these uh, uh, conditions, characteristics of the ring A, Ms. A was satisfying all these characteristics, but it was not clear whether A is itself a, a polynomial ring. And uh, because if it was realized that it, it is very important to uh, know whether this ring is a polynomial ring, because if you prove that this ring A is not a polynomial ring, it would be a step towards proving the linearization conjecture for the affine three space. So as I said before, this linearization conjecture was an open problem. It was posed by Kambayashi in 1970s and uh, it would have also, and if you prove that uh, A is a polynomial ring in three variable, it would lead to the counter example, to the solution of the uh, linearization conjecture for the C3 and as well as the abhankar sarthes conjecture. So abhankar sarthes conjecture uh, was that if f is a polynomial in CXYZ, CXYZ the polynomial ring in three variable, such that the hypersurf plane defined by f is actually an affine plane, then f must be a coordinate line. That is, f is a variable in XYZ. So note that in this ring, if uh, a, uh, if this ring is a polynomial ring in three variables, then the fibers, if I put x is equal to a non-zero constant, then then this y is uh, can be expressed in terms of y z and t and this becomes a polynomial ring in two variables and when x is a non zero con x is equal to 0 then this is z square plus t cube which is not a smooth it's a cusp so it's not c2 it cannot be a polynomial ring in two variables therefore it is uh, a x can never be in coordinate because all its fibers are not uh, C2. And hence, uh, if A is CXY, if A is a polynomial ring in three variables, then A is, will this uh, would give a counter example to the uh, abhankar sarthes uh, epimorphism conjecture. However, it was proved by Makalimana in a very important uh, paper in 1996. He proved that this ring A is not a polynomial ring in three variables. And uh, the major uh, tool which he used was local important derivations and the GA actions. So this uh, eventually, <coughs> so this Makalimanov proof was uh, in a, the idea was quite simple that uh, what he proved is that if small x denotes the image of capital X in A, then he it's easy to see that small x is not a unit in A. Therefore, x is uh, not uh, a constant. And uh, he showed that if uh, D is any local important derivation on the ring A, then D of X is zero. Therefore, the McCullman invariant of the ring A is not C, which must be the case had A, B, C3. Therefore, A is not C3. So this is a very simple idea. However, this proof was not so simple, uh, constructing proving this statement that whenever d is a local potent derivation then dx is equal to zero so this was quite uh, uh, involved uh, so makalimanov gave this proof and which eventually led to this solution of uh, this linearization conjecture by porus and russell in 1996-97 they proved that uh, any c star action on c3 is linearizable and uh, but uh, of course the abhankar sarthes conjecture is still an open problem. I now come to this asonomous threefold. So let uh, K be a field of positive characteristic and A be this ring. So where <coughs> M is an integer, 
P is that uh, characteristic of the field and S is another integer where P does not divide S. And let R be the subring of A generated by X where small x is the image of capital X in A. Then Asanuma had proved that uh, this ring A is a stably polynomial ring over R. That is, if you adjoin one more variable to A, then this becomes a polynomial ring over its subring R. That is, A is a polynomial ring in four variables over the field K. Further, A is not a polynomial ring over R. He proved, Asanuma proved in 1987. And all the fiber rings of A, so even if it is not a polynomial ring over the ring R, all the fiber rings, so if you look at any primordial P of R, so all the fibers of A over a point P, they are all polynomial ring into variables. So this uh, example was uh, constructed by Asanuma to give a counter example to the A2 vibration problem over a PID. So this R is a PID here over a field of positive characteristic. And Asanuma constructed this example to show that A is not a polynomial ring over R, although all its fiber rings are polynomial ring. Just recall there's a theorem by Sate, which is high, one of the major results and highly non-trivial result, which proves that if B is a principal ideal domain containing the field of rational numbers, then uh, any A2 vibration over B must be a polynomial ring. So this was an example given by Asanuma to show that this condition B containing Q is very necessary. So this uh, Asanuma again uh, used this example to give a counter example to the linearization problem in positive characteristic for n greater than or equal to four. So if, uh, and in 1994, uh, uh, this uh, Asanuma uh, <coughs> proved that a, a, this asked this question, whether A is a polynomial ring in uh, three variables over the field K, and uh, because uh, if you could show that this ring A is not a polynomial ring in three variables over K, then this would be a counterexample to the cancellation problem in positive characteristic for the affine three space. On the other hand, if you show that A is actually a polynomial ring in three variables, then it is a counterexample to the linearization problem for the uh, affine three space in positive characteristic. And uh, I showed that A is not a polynomial ring in three variables whenever this integer M is greater than one. And hence, uh, as a consequence, we showed this cancellation, Zariski's cancellation problem does not hold for the affine three space in positive characteristic. To give a solution to this problem, I made use of another invariant, which is associated to the local potent derivative, is associated to a G action, namely the Duxon invariant, and uh, for me, the major tool of working was exponential maps because I was working over a field of positive characteristic where local important derivation does not make much sense. So we studied exponential maps on the ring B. So, I def so this invariant was defined by Duxon and uh, the, it's a subring of B generated by uh, all the elements which are, uh, which are in the ring of invariant of some exponential map. So if phi varies over all exponential maps on the ring B, then and if F is a ring of in, in B phi, then the subring generated by that is called the Duxon invariant of B. And uh, it's easy to see that the Duxon invariant of the polynomial ring Kn is Kn whenever this n is greater than one. For if, uh, if I said B is this polynomial ring Kxn up to Xn, and I define these exponential maps phi i of Xj, where xj's are, uh, miss, uh, where phi i sends uh, xj's to xj plus delta ij of u, that means it fixes all x i's uh, for uh, i not equal, miss, it fixes all. Exam where I text xi to xi, the ring of invariant for b phi i is all those x1, x n except xi, and the Duxon invariant is uh, b. Then, uh, using this, uh, what I proved that uh, the Duxon invariant of this ring b, this ring a is a proper subring of a. However, if uh, a were a polynomial ring, then the Duxon invariant must be the whole ring. 
So it, hence, it cannot be a polynomial ring in three variables. Uh, another, so the major tool was exponential maps and Duxon invariant, which led to the major breakthrough. Another important uh, result in the area of affine algebraic geometry, which uh, I proved using exponential maps and Duxon invariant is this theorem. So this is uh, any arbitrary polynomial, uh, f x y z f x z t and if i call g to be this polynomial and small f to the projection on the plane x equal to 0 then we proved that equivalence of this following five statements that this ring is a polynomial ring in three variables if and only if, uh, it's a polynomial ring over the subring kx uh, or if f is a coordinate in kz t or g is a coordinate in x y z t or if uh, X and G forms a coordinate pair in X, Y, and Z and G. So this uh, study of uh, this uh, polynomial this, uh, uh, in four variables eventually reduces to the study of the polynomial small f, which is a polynomial in just two variables. And knowing whether A is a polynomial ring is same as knowing whether F is a coordinate in case at P, which is a much easier problem than this one. And hence, uh, in we have a solution to many important uh, results, like uh, it gives a partial solution to the Abhyankar Sarthes conjecture. And it also proves in a very easily why this Russell chorus threefold or this asonymous threefold are not polynomial thing because of this characterization. Uh, uh, these five statements are actually an outcome of uh, 10 statements. The all remaining five statements involves the Duxon invariant of the ring A. So we proved that the Duxon invariant is the whole ring A, then uh, all these statements are equivalent. So, so this is a, a how I can say the uh, utility of uh, studying local potent derivations and exponential maps. So I gave some application of uh, G actions uh, to the problems in affine algebraic geometry. G actions on its own has other important uh, uh, problems like uh, the study of Hilbert's 14th problem, or if you study the ring of invariant of the GI actions, which was the original problem. So those are again very well studied uh, problems. And uh, unfortunately, I have not taken it up. Maybe I can talk uh, more about it in the collaborative discussions. Thank you.